for the special sale on woolen mufflers? Oh, I didn't know you were having a sale. Is that what you're hanging the flag up for? Oh, no, Kate. Hey, Herbie, bring me that screwdriver. No, this is a service flag. Had it in stock since 18. I figure when my only employee goes in service, I ought to make something over it. You mean Herbie? Yeah, he's been drafted. Leaves tomorrow. Tomorrow? No fooling. How does he feel about it? Well, he, uh... <laughs> that answer your question? I've seen half-starved hound dogs look happier than that. Yeah, Herbie's all heart. Yeah, but he's not the kind you want to shirk his duty. Oh, of course not. He's upset over leaving his hometown. He thinks nobody cares. But that's not true. Of course it isn't. It could be Herbie's got a point. Not too many people even know he's here. Yeah, I know what you mean. For a boy six feet tall, he sure throws a mighty short shadow. Yeah, not enough shade for a hot frog. <laughs> Poor boy. You're the one he's really going to hate to say goodbye to, Billy Joe. You know how he feels about you. Well, sure, but what Come am on, I going to do? Let's go inside and cheer up Herbie. Especially you, Billy Joe. Herbie, congratulations. We just heard the news. What happened? The draft board changed its mind? <laughs> I mean, congratulations about being called into service. Oh. Well, everyone in Hooda feels sorry to see you go, Herbie. But we're sure proud of you. Huh? We'll miss you. But our hearts will be with you. They will? Not only are the people around here going to miss you, but they're going to sit up and take notice when they see you in uniform. Yeah? Nah. Even in uniform, I'm still me. Oh, well, Herbie, you're going to be dreamy in the uniform. I just know it. Gosh, you really think so, Billy Joe? Oh, do I ever. Well, gosh, I mean, golly. <laughs> Isn't it exciting going into service, Herbie? It's getting to be. <laughs> of course it is, Herbie. Well, good morning, everybody. Oh, hi, hi Junior. Junior. Hello there, Billy Joe. Hi, Junior. Have you heard the good news? It's the biggest event since the opening of the store. You having a sale? Uh, yeah, on woolen mufflers. But listen to this. Herbie's going into the service. Hey, that is a big event. I, I could use a new muffler. You got any, uh, red ones? Junior, the big event is Herbie going into the service. Oh, come on. What's so big about Herbie becoming a dog-faced private? Is that what I'm going to be? A dog-faced private? Of course not. Well, what am I going to be? Anything you want to be. Right, girls? Sure. I'll bet you could even be an officer, say, in the Marines. Or a jet pilot in the Air Force. Or a submarine commander. Or one of those, um, uh, astronauts. Hey, that's a good idea. I sort of like them fancy-looking spacesuits. Maybe I'll become an astronaut. Hey, you got a head start, Herbie. You're practically weightless. <laughs> sure. Being thin can have its advantages. You might be the first man to reach the moon. Are you kidding? Herbie can't even reach for the pork and beans, lest Mr. Drucker points it out to him. Junior, don't be jealous. Je je of Herbie? Herbie couldn't even read the physical requirements to be an astronaut, let alone pass them. Oh? Well, he passed the physical requirements to play football for the Hooterville Hornets. So there. Oh, big deal. Herbie Bates, the all-time leading yardage loser of the all-time scoreless wonders. Well, it, it's a record. <laughs> Herbie, can't you see they're putting you on? On what? Oh, Bates. You're beautiful. You're, you're really beautiful. What do you mean? Well, what he means is that, that you're handsome, and you're going to be even more handsome in uniform. Well, so long, Junior. It was nice seeing you. Hey, wait a minute. I haven't done my shopping yet. This is on the house. Well, what's going on here? I... Star football player you got with you? Hi, Herbie. Hi there, Coach. What are you doing here? Playing hooky from Drucker's store? He's the guest of honor at the party we're throwing for him tonight. Herbie's going in the service tomorrow, Uncle Joe. I'm becoming an astronaut. Well, congrat... A what? An astronaut, Uncle Joe. Herbie? <laughs> Stop joshing me. <laughs> joshing? I'm putting in with them missile-flying fellas. <laughs> with John Glenn going into politics... That leaves the place open for Herbie. <laughs> Come on, girls. Uh, Herbie. Hey. Herbie going to be an astronaut's laughable. <laughs> <laughs>
ain't it? Well, Mom doesn't think so. Or Billy, or Bobby, or Mr. Drucker. Even Junior Hawker wasn't able to laugh about it. <laughs> See, if he was to become an astronaut, he'd be the most famous person ever to come out of Hooterville, wouldn't he? No doubt about it. See, you know a shrewd manager could push him into politics after he gets out and make another John Glenn out of him. Uncle Joe. I might put my brain behind Irby, give him something to fall back on. <laughs> yes, sir, that boy's okay. He's a real comer. <laughs> Hello, Albert. Welcome to Shady Red. Uh, Hello, you old time oh, burner. Huh? Yeah. Sam, how's everything in Hooterville? Hey, what are you doing here, party smasher? Uh, I heard Miss Bradley say everybody was welcome. Well, that don't include you, wise guy. Relax, Herbie. You'll have Billy Joe all to yourself. I will? Sure. Whenever she's not busy dancing with me. Hey, that ain't fair. <laughs> Listen, you stay away from Billy Joe. This is my last but, night with her. Hey, you want to come get some punch with me, Herbie? No, 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 Billy. Herbie and me want to have a talk about his future. Come on. I'll get some with you, Billy Joe. But I, no, wait a minute. I'd like to get some punch with you. Ain't that great, Herbie. I know. I made it myself. I don't care. I'm going to get me some with Billy Joe. I knew a fellow once that felt the same way about cider. Good or bad, he couldn't leave his stuff alone. <laughs> for a fact, for a fact. Oh, Junior, that's cute. I don't think anything a slacker says is particular cute. Don't talk stupid, Bates. Junior's not a slacker, Herbie. I don't see him offering his services to his country. I'm deferred till I get out of college. Then I'm going into officer's training school. See? He admits it. He's going to stay home and become a policeman. <laughs> I'm becoming an officer in the army, you dope. Oh, that kind. Um, boys, if we're going to argue, I'm going to have to break this up. Maybe, maybe you and I better go for a walk. Uh, no, no, we won't argue anymore. Oh, yes, we will. Now, let's walk. <laughs> Hooterville's hottest vote getter. Hooterville's who? You know, Mom, Uncle Joe's political protege, Herbie Bates. He's the John Glenn of our town, otherwise known as Orbitin Herbie Bates. <laughs> Uncle Joe, why don't you stop bothering that boy? He'd like to spend a little time alone with Billy. Tonight's our only chance to map out his political career. It's also his only chance to say goodbye to Billy. He ain't got no time to waste on girls. He's saving all his sweet talk for the voters and his kisses for their babies. <laughs> well, there goes the last of the big-time political bosses. I may be going real far away, Billy Joe. I know. Oh, but all right, T, I promise. You won't be running around with that slacker Junior Hawker all the time, will you? Oh, not all the time. I promise. Do you want to seal it with a kiss? Do you? Golly, do I ever. Hey, Herbie. <laughs> Been looking all over for you. I want to talk to you. I can't wait. Please, Mr. Carson. You can see him later, Uncle Joe. Nope, I got to see him tonight. Uh, Billy Joe, why don't you go in and join the guests while Herbie and me discuss his destiny? Well... If I can't sit here quiet and peaceful, I want to dance. Me too. Now, wait a minute, son. You got to start thinking of your future. That's what I'm thinking about. As soon as Billy goes inside, Junior's going to glom onto her. Now, hold on, son. If you want to get someplace with Billy, you ain't going to do a dancing. Oh, you, you see me dance, huh? Well, that's not what I mean. Relax and rock for a minute. I'll tell you how you can win over everybody in these parts. Including Billy Joe. You mean it? It's a cinch. With me guiding your destiny, there ain't no reason why you couldn't become even more popular than Johnny Glenn, Gordo Cooper. Yeah, astronauts sure do become famous. And how? Well, you could even be one of the first ones on the moon. Billy Joe ain't about to forget you with your name splashed all over the papers. Yeah, I reckon not. 
It's only a short jump from the moon to the state capitol. State capitol? You come home a famous astronaut, pushing you right into politics. Politics? Yeah, Billy Joe cheering you onward and upward, just like everybody else. Junior Hawker would sure have to go something to beat that. Yeah, so would some of them other young punks tracing around after Billy. Golly, Mr. Carson. I can't think of anything I'd rather do than having Billy Joe look up to me. If becoming an astronaut is what it takes to make Billy Joe forget about everybody else, then that's what I'm going to do. Well, I'm going to go down to... Mr. Carson? There's nothing makes me edgier than somebody rocking against me. (laughs) Now, will you learn how to rock, or I'm pulling my brains out of this deal? Sorry, sir. Now, between flights and the missile, get in some good rocking practice, will you? Yes, sir. Certainly will. Good boy. Now, let's go in and hit him with our speech. Speech? I ain't no public speaker. Herbie, my boy, with me behind you, you can do anything. All right, everybody's quiet. Now, tell us what's on your mind, Herbie. Thank you, Mrs. Bradley. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, unaccustomed as I am to public speaking, I'd still like to take this opportunity to thank you all for coming to my party, and especially Mrs. Bradley for throwing it for me. Also want to make an announcement about my military career. I also want to make an announcement about my military career. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, when they swear me in, they won't be swearing in any dog face. They'll be swearing in a rip snorting terrier. <laughs> me. Ah, <laughs> uh, I hereby announce that I'm becoming America's newest. Astronaut stupid. Astronaut stupid. (laughs) No, no, just plain astronaut. (laughs) Uh, After a couple of trips around the moon and back uh, with my buddies like Johnny Glenn and Gordon Cooper, uh, I'm coming home and throwing my space helmet in the political ring. Any questions you want answered about me while I'm gone? Any questions you want answered about me while I'm gone? Just check with that public-spirited citizen, Genial Joe Carson. Just check with that public-spirited citizen, Genial Joe Carson. I thank you. I thank you. Hello, Kate. Well, Genial Joe, you just helped that boy make a fool of himself. Kate. You keep proving over and over that women and politics don't mix. We never should have given you the vote. With you and Herbie in politics, we may give it back. Walked all the way back from the army camp, 40 miles through brush, so no one would see me. Well, sit down before you faint and fall in it. Is anybody around here? Everybody's asleep, except Billy Joe. She's writing you another letter. But what happened? Well, after six days in the service, they up and kicked me out. Why? Well, it seems like I got what they call a trick knee. They said it probably came from playing football. And they said I also got a bad back, also probably from playing football. Anyway, after pert near a week of tests and x-rays, They decided to give me a medical discharge. Oh, that's a shame, Herbie. But you've always got your job at Druckers to go back to. Oh, I ain't going back there, Mrs. Bradley. After me popping off the way I did before I left, I ain't ever going to be able to face anybody again. Especially Billy Joe. Oh, I sure made a fool of myself. With some strong assistance from genial Joe. Will you hide me here till morning? Of course, Herbie, but why Then I'll disappear. I'll take off for some foreign place, like the Casbah or Cleveland or something. Now, stop talking, silly. If you're bent on hiding, I'll stash you in the attic till we can figure out some way of bringing you back from the service proper-like. Then you won't tell Billy Joe what a flop I am? Oh, no, of course not. Come on, let's go up to the attic. It isn't very comfortable, but then I'm afraid you have no choice. You either have to be honest or uncomfortable. What a shame. Herbie sure came a cropper, didn't he? Yeah. 
Poor boy's hiding up in my attic. But his spirits is down in the cellar. <laughs> Too bad you had to sneak in here at night to tell me about it, Kate. Well, I wish I could think of some way to help you, but my mind's all full of newspaper business right now. Well, Sam, the, the truth of the matter is, I wanted to catch you before you went to press with the Hooterville World Guardian. Kate figures the paper can help her be out of the mess he's in. When people read things in black and white, they're more likely to believe it. You know that, Sam. Hey, now, wait a minute, Kate. As owner, editor, and publisher of Hooterville's only newspaper, and a man who's never deviated from the truth... You don't expect me to write a story to cover up for a bungling youth, do you? No, Sam. I'll write the story. That's different. <laughs> I'd be proud to print anything you write, Kate. I'll set the type. Hey, how about me doing something? Okay, you can do our proofreading. If it's all the same with you, I think I'd be better at proof listening. <laughs> yep, the strategy I got planned for Herbie won't be long with either way up there. Your strategy already has him way up there. Well, he ain't an astronaut yet. He's got to go through a period of training first. Earl, your mother's a fine woman, but her understanding of military service and politics is pathetic. <laughs> extra, extra. Read all about it. Local hero returns. What's all the excitement, yeah. Charlie? Herbie's coming home. No. Yeah, for a fact. Well, look, everybody. Our Herbie returns. Herbie Bates, the popular young Hooterville resident who recently applied for duty in the armed services as an astronaut, received a medical discharge and is returning to Hooterville. The cause of his injury is not disclosed due to the classified nature of his assignment. <laughs> <laughs> suppose it's true? What do you mean, you suppose? There it is in black and white. Well, yes, I know, but sometimes Kate, newspaper... Now there's another thing you're proving you don't know anything about. The newspaper game. Well, I guess you're right, Uncle Joe. <laughs> it says here he'll be home tomorrow. Why don't we arrange for a homecoming celebration for him? Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that's a good idea, Charlie. Say, I'll make a banner for the side of the train. Hero special or something. Uncle Joe, don't ruin another one of my good sheets by painting on it. Yeah, but Kate... Well, okay. This time it's worth it. I wonder how bad Herbie was hurt. Well, I don't know, but a great career was nipped in the bud. Oh, my poor Herbie. There goes the governor's seat right down the drain. Hi, Mrs. Bradley. Boy, your room sure is a lot nicer than the attic. Thanks. Now, the next stage is to get you down and sneak you onto that train when it pulls in. I'm going to get out of these jeans and into a nice dress for Herbie's homecoming. Okay. I'm going to take my bath now. There's going to be more eyes in that hallway than in a sack of potatoes. <laughs> you fixing on doing? <laughs> With Bobby's dress and Billy's coat and Betty Joe's wig from the school play and my fur piece, we might get away with it. Come on. Oh, who's that? Derby, <laughs> it's you. Hey. Ain't a bad looker, huh? Come on, gorgeous. Here she comes, folks. Come on, there's something bothering me. What's that, dear? Well, that girl over there, do you know who she is? Oh, probably a friend of Herbie's. Well, I don't like her. Now, why do you say that? For one thing, she's got a coat on, just like my new one. For another thing, look how snooty she is standing over there by herself. Oh, well, no, never mind her. Here comes the cannonball with Herbie. Look, dear, look. Look at the no train. good, Herbie Bates. <laughs> what, what? He no sooner gets a uniform on than 
And he has to go take up with that hussy. <laughs> oh, that's what you think. Good. I mean, it is good to think that way. Uh, well, uh, watch the train, dear. I've been riding to him for six whole days, and I haven't even looked at another boy. At least not for very long. And he has to go and do that to me. Pipe down, will you, Billy? You know, I ought to go there and scratch her eyes out that, that man-stealer. Oh, Billy. <laughs> Could I have your attention, please? This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. The triumphant return of our own Herbie Bates. We take this opportunity to welcome him home from a short but distinguished career in the military service. <laughs> He's getting himself together a little slowly, folks. Is he busted up bad? Well, not too bad, uh, but he don't quite look like his old self. Hey! 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 Look at his lips. <gasps> There's lipstick all over him. <laughs> oh, that hussy, she sneaked on the train and she kissed him. <gasps> Where is she? I'm going to kill her. For heaven's sake, quiet down, Scarlett O'Hara. <laughs> Thank you, folks. I'm glad to be home, and I'm fixing to go back to work at Mr. Drucker's store real soon. Goodbye, Herbie. Now, folks, let's all go up to Kate's for coffee and donuts. Oh, Herbie, my wonderful darling Herbie. What? Oh, promise me you'll never look at that hussy again. Here, let me wipe her lipstick off of you. What? <laughs> There, that's better. Now, here's some of mine. Golly, Billy Joe. Well, golly. That? Well, the nerve of that hussy. She even wears my shade of lipstick. Golly. Come on, I'm not letting you out of my sight. Going back to Drucker's store. I knew that kid was a loser. Doesn't look like one right now to me. <laughs> hey, Junior, you ever give any thought to using a military career as a springboard into politics? I'm not interested in politics, Mr. Carson. Kate, you're looking at a frustrated man with a great brain and no way of making it pay off. Yes, Uncle Jim. Stuck out here in the middle of nowhere with nothing but losers. Yes, Uncle Joe. <laughs> Ain't it a cotton-picking shame? This has been a Filmways presentation.